Divorce lawyers of Reddit, what's the worst way you've seen someone frick over their spouse? Story from my parents who are lawyers. So throughout the divorce proceedings, there was a car that was a huge point of contention between the husband and wife. After months and months of saying he would never let the wife have the car, the husband concedes in exchange for something great, like one of their summer houses. It turns out he had been driving the car for 3 hours every day in a big loop around the city, putting thousands and thousands of miles on it basically making it worthless. The amount of planning and spite that went into that was amazing. Should put it on jack stands and set the cruise control to, to 120 miles per hour. Get miles faster with less effort. Never tried it, just an idea. I'm an accountant not a divorce lawyer. Had a client hide ziplock bags of ground meat throughout the house, in air vents, the attic, behind water heater etc. I think it was at least 20-30 bags that took months to find all of them. Parents divorce seemed simple dad cheated on mom, mom gets custody of me, dad didn't like paying alimony and child support to the tune of $2k a month after he gave up rights, dad had great idea, pay a hitman $15k to kill soon to be ex-wife, dad goes through with it, idiot actually pays undercover cop the money, dad then flies back to Canada, home, and wait for results, international task force is formed to try and detain him. Geraldo Rivera cover story, idiot dad gets arrested in Toronto and flown back to California. In this process I was 3 in care of family back down south, mother in protection by police. Dad's family apparently wealthy gets good lawyer is charged with 17 felonies can't remember how many he was convicted of. He gets 18 months. After all of this mom still had to sue for divorce it took 2 years. A woman in my town is a principal at a local elementary school. She is in her mid 70s at least. I asked someone why she doesn't retire and they explained that she and her spouse went through a very contentious divorce about 15 years ago and she has to give him a portion of her retirement so she has decided to never retire so he gets nothing. Ever. Ha 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 ha. My uncle represented this guy getting a divorce from his wife of 15 years. Super toxic breakup and they split everything 50 stroke 50, even the land that the house they lived in sat upon. Well she decides to build a house right behind the other house. Mind you this was a lot of land probably 200 yards separating both home sites, so that the back of the houses faced each other. The house gets built and my uncle gets a call from his client asking about the legality of a situation he had gotten himself into. Apparently his ex-wife would spend a lot of time in her backyard. So he saw her all the time. What he did was buy a female dog and name it the same name as his ex-wife. Anytime he would let his dog back in from letting her out he would yell Susan you be. Get in here he would also yell if she was peeing on the flowers. Susan you be. Quit pee on the flowers or Susan you be. Quit digging in the dirt the ex-wife called the cops on him a couple of times. But there was nothing they could do because the dog was registered under the name of Susan. And it was in fact a bee so there you go. This shouldn't be funny, but it really is. My mom was a real piece of work in this department. My mother is mentally unstable and was very abusive to me as a child. When my father finally moved out and asked for a divorce I was luckily old enough 13 to legally decide who I wanted to live with. I, of course, chose my dad and that enraged my mother. By court order, she was allowed to live in our 4 bedroom house while me and my dad had to move in with my aunt into a 2 bedroom house. We lived there for 4 years while my mom did everything she could to slow down the divorce proceedings. During this period my father was court ordered to pay the mortgage and utilities on the house my mother was living in. She would leave all the lights on and crank the heat with the windows open just to drive the utility bills up. She once left the garden hose on for a week into a drain to even make the water bill outrageous. When it was finally all over and she had taken my dad for as much as she could she decided to sue him for my college fund. I called her and told her if she went through with it I would never speak to her again. She told me if I wanted it I needed to move in with her before I turned 18 so she could get child support from my dad. I refused. She won the case for the money and my dad had to use most of what was left of the fund to pay for her lawyer's costs. Bro, what a bee. The couple separated 10 years ago but didn't officially divorce until a couple years ago. She was going to get his house so he burnt it down then faxed her the transfer of ownership forms. He might be going to jail for arson though. 
worked at a law firm that was subpoenaed as part of a divorce between a partner at the firm and a partner at another major law firm. The woman issued more than 70 subpoenas to banks, firms, investment companies, you name it, because she was convinced he had squirreled away $20 plus million overseas behind her back. It got so bad that she dug up receipts from 25 years ago to try to put together this grand conspiracy puzzle. In the end, after she racked up $1.5 million in legal fees, and 7 different lawyers, the judge said this crap is ridiculous, there was no conspiracy, and you are not entitled to a portion of this phantom $20 million. Mind you, this was a major law firm partner who was acting this way. She made millions per year in her career, but she apparently lost her mind. Sounds to me like she had some money squirreled away and was looking for his stash to pilfer. My ex and I separated before the divorce. She agreed to watch the dog while I found a new place. She had the dog put down instead. At the time I worked on bank equipment, my favorite was opening safety deposit boxes for the bank. So I was asked to get there before the bank opened which was odd. I show up and greet the bank employee along with a lawyer and a very angry looking woman. I get the lock open and swing the door open as the angry woman shouts let me in there and I step outside the vault. That mother sucker and storms off. But she threw down a piece of paper that said frick you be. It had been a nasty divorce and the ex-husband got there before she did. The worst part about this story is we have no idea who was actually the bad guy here. My father went through the process recently. Amounts of money aren't the real concern. The assets must be split as close to 50 stroke 50 as possible. So the fricking over generally comes in the form of inequitable distribution of one of a kind things. My father had a precious set of old, inexpensive kitchenware that his late mother gave him before he even married my mother. When the divorce went to mediation and she told the mediator that she wanted those pots and pans, she got them. She got them because she was willing to give up something else of equal monetary value so, something worth less than $10, and was willing to sit in mediation for hours, racking up thousands in lawyer fees for both sides, until my father consented. Again, an even financial trade, but a sentimental trade of overwhelming disparity, just as a final frick you. Non-marital property that isn't intermingled, joint accounts, shouldn't be split during divorce. I met with a scummy one when I was looking to get a divorce. The first lawyer I met with, who had been recommended by a co-worker as an amazing divorce attorney, suggested that, if I wanted full custody, I should make sure people knew the relationship was abusive. Tell my friend's family, make sure the neighbors heard me screaming begging him not to hit me, document every bruise even if I wasn't sure it came from him. Thing is, my relationship wasn't abusive and I'd already told her that multiple times. She never outright said I should fabricate evidence or anything, but she ignored my repeated statements that there was no abuse and kept on with her detailed instructions of how to document any abuse that might happen. I got the distinct impression that she was letting me know how to create an abusive relationship out of thin air in order to get custody of my kids. I ended up not using her as an attorney, for obvious reasons, and in the end my ex and I shared 50 stroke 50 physical and legal custody of our children and raised them together despite despite whatever issues we had with each other. I can't help but wonder, though, how many dads lost her relationship with their kids because of her zealous coaching. Thank you for not being a complete butthole and making things worse for your kids. Kids can survive divorce if the parents can act like adults. I'm always impressed, and envious, when divorced parents are civil, mine weren't. I literally didn't know it was possible. A friend of mine in high school worked at a pizza place. One of the delivery drivers was just ridiculously smart when I talked to him. Later I found out that he used to be a nuclear physicist. His wife was also a nuclear physicist, but left him for her lawyer. He got screwed out of his kids, most of the assets, and had to pay a lot towards alimony child support. He did the math, and figured out the tips he didn't get taxed on plus his minimum wage delivering pizza was more than keeping his job as a nuclear physicist. Plus he got a little satisfaction not having to pay her as much. The guy was really nice. I always felt bad for him. My dad actually got fricked by his divorce lawyer during my parents divorce last year. My dad and my sister have never gotten along. 
and over the years it got more and more strained. They eventually got into a physical fight which led to a CPS report and him getting slapped with a child abuse record. They labeled it as confirmed but isolated, so he's not on the registry and you can only see it with certain background checks. In this case, my mom was obviously going to get full custody of my sister. My mom also wanted to give my dad the house, and his cars, and his money pit of a boat. Lawyer decided, because my dad is stubborn as frick, that he would string old dad along. Lawyer spent hours with my dad trying to convince him that dad could get more money and custody from my mom. They did a divorce mediation, so they wouldn't have to go to court, and lawyer dragged it out for 4 hours. The whole time he was riling my dad up, thinking he could get things like the original down payment on the house, half custody of my sister, my mom's car, etc. At the end of the 4 hours of mediation, lawyer told my dad he should take the deal that my mom and her lawyer had originally offered in the first place, and dad signed that, so he paid about $12,000 in completely unnecessary legal fees. What a piece of crap. I did surgical rotations with an ob and have personally seen the lowest of the low. In divorce hearings, people say a lot of crap when trying to place blame or get custody. A lot of it is straight up lies. Not all lies can be erased or taken back. The worst one is an accusation of sexual abuse. You cannot redact an accusation of sexual abuse against a minor. It happened ridiculously more frequently than I can stomach. A spouse trying to get the upper hand, makes the claim. Now the lawyer court state is bound by law to investigate, and suddenly that precious, innocent child that mommy is trying to gain custody of is brought to the oar, sedated, and then investigated inside and out for evidence of abuse. Those are about the only days that nobody in the entire wing says anything. No jokes, no smiles. Just a sick feeling in your stomach that takes away all appetite and joy. So many times, the parent who makes the accusation finds out what they're about to put the child through, and tries to take it back, tries to cancel the procedure, tries to say they may have been confused or mistaken, or even admits they flat out lied. Doesn't matter. Once that box is opened, the investigation must continue. Of the couple dozen cases I saw, I can only recall one that supported the accusation. Freaking disgusting pieces of crap. Banker here, had heaps of situations where joint overdraft credit card comes up just before divorce to the absolute surprise of one of the parties. Drained down to zero, of course. Especially sad when it's students young kids who find themselves heartbroken after the breakup and with a debt they can't afford. My dad divorced his first wife and promptly took his name off of all the credit cards. She proceeded to buy all kinds of crap thinking she'd stick him with the bill. She was not happy to hear she was the only one on the account. Dad was a real butthole and mom tried to save him a lot of money during the divorce. They have three kids who were 16, 13, and 8. Dad wouldn't sign any agreement my mom's lawyer produced. It had to be his idea and from his lawyer or it wasn't getting signed. Dad's lawyer was incompetent and sends an agreement that states he will pay $2,000 a month in child support until all kids are 18. Mom tried to explain to dad that it needed to be revised to lower every time a child turned 18. Dad called mom a C during that negotiation so mom said frick it and signed the agreement and dad paid the $2,000 month for 10 years when he should have been paying around $1,400 month for 5 years and $700 month for the last 5 years. Your mom sounds nice. No sarcasm. She tried. My two bosses were married and opened a bike shop together. He was the brains in the backbone since he was a former Olympic mechanic. She just sort of balanced the checkbook and worked a couple days a week. Unfortunately, he had no credit and she did, so when they opened everything was in her name. All he wanted in the divorce was the bike shop and was willing to buy her half. She wanted the bike shop too, but didn't want to buy him out for his half. Mind you, her father passed away and she was sitting on like $300k in the bank and also had the audacity to take out student loans for her daughter to go to college. He lost the bike shop and I think he got a little bit of money for his share. What she didn't expect was that all of the high paying customers would stop going there. They were all his friends or they only wanted him to work on their bikes. So I don't know why she would have had that notion. So he opened up his own bike shop and all of the regulars have become regulars at the new bike shop. Finally a story with some justice. This thread was stressing me out. 
you've been visited by the snug smug you will be blessed with cozy, comfy sleep but only if you comment sleep snug, smug if you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video, or don't, either way, have a great day you magnificent people.